Hello everyone, I'm Chris Bai. I'm actually senior college scientist at the BenQ and also the manager of Technology Lab. It's very nice. Today we have my guest here, also my very good friend, Art here today with me to actually demonstrate the PMU, Pattern Master Ultimate, with a new feature coming to our PD lines today. The monitors actually need calibrations over time because it's actually, um, there's backlight. Over the time, it will get darker, it will get more yellow shirt. So you will not notice like very dramatic change, but over time, it will change. That's definitely, that's physics. That will really affect your work. So what we recommended is at least for every three months, especially with PD lines, if you're doing professional works here. And secondly, people always talk about Oh, I'm so afraid of doing calibration. I don't know how to do it. And there are like so many parameters out there. I don't know what to choose. That's why we make this um, PMU so friendly. We have a, like a new basic mode here. So you can actually just click on what you do. For example, web design or maybe um, just video editing. Okay, for these kind of settings, you just click on what you do in your workflow and just click next, next, next. That's it. You don't need to worry about what you set. Oh, for example, what the luminous one should I set, what the color gamut I should set, or what the color gamut I should set. So that's enough about me, and I think uh, it's time for Art to let introduce how we do the calibration first, and then um, we could actually um, do a color match between these two monitors. So let's talk about the demo display we have first. This is BenQ brand new PD 2730S. It is a 27 inch IPS 5K display. The contrast ratio for this is 2001, 98% DCI-P3 coverage. This also has a nano matte panel, meaning that it's pretty much very matte, like the SW line, like a matte sheet of paper, which is really awesome. It has Thunderbolt 4 and display daisy chain, so you can just use one single connection and link these two display together. And obviously it supports for Palette Master Ultimate and BenQ Display Color Talk software. And with this, we're gonna be doing the calibration on one of this PD first, and then afterwards we're going to do a color match. So rather than it calibrating each display independently, we're gonna calibrate one and we're gonna match this specific one to that panel. And this is going to give you an even better consistency across multiple PD panels. If you have multiple, if you have two, that's great. If you have three, that's really awesome. But you're gonna be able to see colors that are really matching across so for this I have Palette Palette Master Ultimate Array launch this is the display I have selected the calibrator I have is the Calibrite Display Pro HL I'll click on start and you simply go through and choose two options color calibration or validation so I'm gonna have color calibration which is the default in blue already there selected and here I'm given different options that I can use. So like Chris mentioned before, these are all graphical user interface. You don't really need to go in and dial in any of these settings. You don't need to know the color gamut, the gamma, also the luminance curve that you're gonna use because it's already predetermined for you based on what they think is good. So for this one, what I'm probably gonna do is let's do graphic design 120 nits or candela. CIE D65, so that we're using 65, D65 white point. This is pretty much like daylight. sRGB gamma curve and also sRGB color gamut. Now, the other thing too is that if you want to change the luminance, you can. And this is the one thing that you can really go in. They suggest that you use 120, but for now, what I can go in and change this and I can select 80 if I want to. So if I want my display to be a little bit more dim, if I print, that might be a good number to go with. The recommended luminance range for display calibration for any pro workflow, regardless of if you're design, photography, video, whatever that may be. My number, the magic range is between 80 to 120. Pick the one that works best for you and your environment, especially if you print. But for now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna choose 100 and we're gonna do a graphic design. From that point, what I'm gonna simply do is choose the calibration mode. And this new model, BenQ include two different calibration modes, so you can do two different color gamuts if you want to. Something that's really cool, and you can switch back and forth between the two. For now, I'm gonna simply do user one. I'll click on next. All right, lastly, we have the ICC profile name. Best recommendation is leave that alone because it will tell you the parameters that you have to set up. The calibration slot, all of your settings, including the date, so you know when you have gone in to calibrate this. If you wanna change this name, you can certainly do that, but like I said, I recommend just keeping this. Next, 
which is gonna click next and we're here at the calibrator screen. So this display is already tilted, which is what we want. I'm gonna leave it like so. But what we're gonna do is open the calibrator up. So there's an instruction on if the calibrator is closed like this and you don't see the lens, that's not good. So what we wanna do is pull this cap over and flip it over like that to expose the lens. There's a felt lining here. So as long as the display is tilted back and this is pretty much laying flat on the display like that, you're good the light contamination in the environment won't really come in. What this really means in translation is you don't need to be in a dark room to calibrate, and that's really awesome. So what I'm gonna do is simply click on next, and it's telling you right now to tilt the display back, which we already have done, so I'm gonna leave it like so. Have this right in the center because this is already, you know, in the center of display, right? So what we're gonna do is click on next, and one more time, verify this in the center, click on start. This is going to go through the calibration process. For this, because it is a software calibration, BenQ is going to calibrate, I believe it is 23 color patches right now. And the initialization in the beginning is the software talking directly with the display firmware. As you can see, the color is adjusting right now, it's adjusting the brightness, and it's doing a lot of grayscale adjustment and also some color adjustment right now. What's really cool about this is when it's finished with these 23 patches, it's also going to to go through a validation process. So you don't need to do a separate validation. It's all in session. And at the end, we're gonna get a calibration report card that gives us our Delta E value for the display. And a few things to note about the Delta E value, anytime you can get a professional display with a Delta E value under three, it's considered good, that's good for workflow, but anytime you can get a Delta E value under two, what that really means is that with normal human vision, you can't really discern the difference or it's extremely difficult to discern a vision. And the only time you're gonna see a Delta E of two is that we have two colors just or the same color just right next to each other and one's off by a little bit. But if you're just really doing design, if you're really doing creative work, you're not really going to see a Delta E value of two variation that much. So we're gonna wait for the calibration to finish here and then we'll talk about the validation screen and then do the color matching. All right, so the calibration process is complete. It already gone through the validation. We're going to click on check report. Now you can simply just bring this down, rotate the covers to go over the lens, but I'm gonna leave it on the display for now because I'm gonna do the display matching with the next one over. So this is giving us a calibration report that is has passed, and we're seeing an average LTE of 1.09, which is really awesome. The threshold we have set here is two, which is really low already. Again, not discernible with a normal human vision. One is definitely like something you're definitely not going to see a variation. So we're gonna click on more detail. And with this, you can kind of see some of the colors being measured a little bit. So you can get a little bit more detail, you can do that. But for now, what I'm gonna simply do is click on complete. This is going to just pretty much complete the process that calibration complete, please do not adjust the color setting because even though you know, you have done the calibration here because this is a software calibrated display, you can still go in and manually override the settings. So what you want to do is avoid changing the brightness and doing any of those things when it comes to the software calibrated display. So BenQ kind of brought in some of the calibration features to talk directly with the firmware, but with this one, you can still go in and adjust the settings. So avoid doing that. Now, what I'm going to do at this point in time is I'm going to select the other BenQ PD2730S, so this is now moved to the other screen. We're gonna still use the same device and I'm going to simply click on start. Now with this Palette Master Ultimate, we're gonna do color calibration again. I'm gonna click on enter there. And instead of choosing a workflow this time around, I'm simply going to choose match other monitor. So I'll go with this and it says that it recommends that you really measure BenQ monitor of the same model, ideally, purchased around the same time or just same models in general because the backlight is also going to be slightly different for each different BenQ PD models and also different sizes 32 and 27 is going to be slightly different and this is what they recommend to guarantee the best result now can you do with other models yes can you do with other BenQ backlights for example another PD like a 32 inch one yeah absolutely just it's just that the result might not be the most fine-tuned and might not match the best so that's the case what we're going to do now is click on continue and this is the part where there's a measurement window that comes up. What I simply need to do here is drag this to the display that I want to measure. That's the display that I want to use as a reference, which is this first PD. So I'm going to drag this over like so, just like that. I'm going to click on next and it's tell me to again rotate the calibrator, place it on the display, click on next. 
it's telling me to tilt the display back. And again, the standard practice of warming up your display, turning off your system settings, all these sort of things still apply to display matching. We're gonna click on next, put the calibrator just right there. Tilt the display back, it's already tilted, so I'm gonna leave it like so. And click on start. It's going to do the measurement for this display, gathering all the data. And then what we're gonna do is continue on this secondary PD. All right, so the measurement is complete and is now telling us a couple things. The luminance is 100 nits, which is the one we set on the calibration. The white point value, it tells us the gamut RGB value and also the gamma. We set it to 2.2, 2.16. It's really close enough. It's within the plus minus range. You're not really going to see a difference. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna save this as a target anyway. You can save this to a desktop. It's not a bad idea to save this, but these are going to change over time. So you may not necessarily need to do that as long as you measure just right before you go through the display matching. What I'm gonna do is click on done. So now what this is simply going to do is take all the values from that display that we just measure and it's going to apply it to this particular PD display. Similarly to what I've done before, you're going to select the calibration mode. I'm gonna choose mode one, click on next. All the warning comes up again, leave your display on, turn off the system setting, true tone, so on and so forth. And rather than giving us a value this time around or you know the name that tells us everything, it's telling us that it's using a target monitor and it's giving a date. Now for this one, if you wanna go in and put in the parameters, you can. If you wanna say like I'm referencing you know, my left PD or something like that, you can certainly do that to remind yourself or you can just leave it as a default, which I'm going to do that now and click on next. Very similarly to what we have done before, it's going to ask us to remove the cover or rotate the cover, tilt the display back, line this up in the box, and click on start. It's going to initialize the process. Again, 23 patches with validation. Once this is done, we're gonna come back. And the interesting part about this entire process when we do a display match like this is the Delta E that we get in the end for this particular panel it's not gonna be the Delta E for the panel, but it's actually the Delta E var variation from the reference panel we have. So if you can get this value extremely low, that means the color matching between these two are almost negligible, which is actually awesome because that means you can see really great color match between the two. So let's wait until we get the validation report on this and I'll jump right back in and have a conversation about that. All right, so now that the calibration have uh, finished, we're gonna click on check report. I am going to bring the device down and pretty much close it so that the lens is not exposed. Amazingly enough, Delta E value of two, we're actually getting 0.53. That means we're able to match these two display to a degree that you can't really do otherwise. It's really hard to get this and the result we're getting right now is really awesome. It's telling us the result and all the values, but like I said, if your Delta E is under one, you don't even have to think about the color variation between two displays. And this is something that is really good. Again, we can click on more detail to find out what the Delta E values are, and they're actually matching really good. Majority of them are actually under one. There's only like maybe one or two that's just slightly above one. From now, what I'm gonna do is click on complete and this is gonna remind us that this is a software calibrated display. Even though it made the adjustment on the firmware, you should not go in and make manual adjustment afterwards to guarantee that you're gonna get the most accurate result possible. And at this point in time, you can just pretty much close out Palette Master Ultimate. So this has been a process on how to calibrate your BenQ PD display using BenQ Palette Master Ultimate. Calibrate one and color matching the other to guarantee the best color consistency possible. I wanna say a thank you to Dr. Chris Bai for sharing us this knowledge, the philosophy behind this, and for him and his lab for building this amazing software that we get to use for you know these BenQ PD displays to get the best color accuracy possible. Anyway, I'm Art and I'll see you around.